Hi, my name's Chef Neil. Welcome to this SHS Nutrition Cook Along. Tonight we're going to cook a three course meal. We're going to make a starter, we're going to make a main course, and then we're going to make a delicious dessert. We're going to use some of the low profile products up from the table in front of us, and we're going to use the Ready Steady Cookbook. So get your pinnies on, get the gas under your pans, and let's get ready. So wash your hands and let's get start cooking. We're going to use the sliced uh, low protein bread. We're going to make some nice garlic bread. This is probably the first thing I ever made as a chef. Okay, so in there, we've just got a little knob of butter. We've got some crushed garlic on there. Put a little bit of parsley into there. And my head chef always said, put a little squeeze of lemon juice into it. Okay, there we go. And then you're just going to push it all together. Use your fingers and just mix it all the way through. Okay, now you can spread this straight on the top, but if you make too much of it, there is loads of ways that we can actually save this. Okay. So there's your garlic bread. What you can do is just take yourself a little bit of greaseproof paper, put the garlic bread into there, and then just roll it up like a Christmas cracker. Okay, and then just turn the ends. And what you're going to end up with is a nice little circle of garlic butter. The good thing about this is you can put it in the fridge or the freezer and you can use it for any time. Okay, now, to make the garlic bread, what you need is three slices of low protein bread. If you want to make it a little fancy, you could just take a little cutter and just cut it out there like that. Or you can butter it, then cut it into strips, or you can do it into triangle. The choice is yours. So just take your garlic butter, you see how you unroll it? There you go. And then just spread it over the top. Then what we're going to do with the garlic butter and the low protein bread is we're going to put it under the grill or if you have a panini maker or a little sandwich toast maker you can put it into there and you can make really nice toasted garlic bread okay whatever you do don't stick it in the toaster okay I've actually seen that done once or twice when people have tried to cook it in the toaster so there's our garlic bread on the wire now and we're just going to put it into there okay and we're just going to leave it there. We're not going to walk away, we're just going to watch it go golden brown. Once it starts to go golden brown, we're going to take it out of there. So the garlic bread's in there. It's going to take about five minutes to cook now. So we're just going to let it start to grill underneath there. You can smell the garlic from here now. What we're looking for is a nice golden colour on top of the low profiling bed. And when it comes out, we'll put it down there. As you can see, there we go. Starting to caramelise. Look at that, it's looking really, really good. Just a couple of more seconds under the grill and it will be perfect. So there, there is our beautiful garlic bread. Looks absolutely delicious. Remember, you can use a panini maker or you can use a sandwich maker. But again, you can just use it under the toaster like we've done. That low profiling bread looks absolutely fantastic. So we're just gonna put it on there, lovely and crisp. And there you are, some really, Nice little garlic bread, either to dip into your soup or maybe have as little starters sometime. Okay, we're going to make a nice Thai green soup. We've got some nice lime to give it a little bit of zing into there. We've got some chilli. We've got some nice fresh vegetables, onions in there, a little bit of garlic into there as well. We've got some nice low protein milk. We could use Snow Pro. We've got some uh, Thai green chilli. Always check the label to make sure you're allowed to use the jar. And we've got a nice little bit of vegetable stock and some chilli oil. And from this, we're going to make a lovely, nice Thai green soup. We're going to serve some nice garlic bread with this and it'll be absolutely delicious. Nice and hot and spicy for those winter nights. Pour your oil in. Okay, get your oil up to temperature. Okay, you can hear it sizzling away in the bottom of there. And then just gradually add your vegetables in. You can hear them stirring away. There we go. Put the chili in, the most important part. There we go. And we're just going to sweat these off for a couple of seconds. It doesn't take long to make this soup. Mm, smell. There we go. So you smell the garlic, the chilies are cooking in there. What we're going to do is we're just going to sweat the vegetables here. Yeah. So we just want them to go nice and soft. Then we're going to pour in the stock. We'll add the Thai green sauce into there. And then we're going to pour the low protein milk over the top. And then we're going to let it simmer for a few little minutes. 
and then we'll have some lovely Thai soup. Okay, so we're just going to put our stock into there now. Okay, we're just going to put the, the Thai green chili into there. Mix, and then we're just going to stir it. Okay, we'll come back to the boil, and then we're just going to finish it off with the milk, the low protein milk. We put the Thai green chili into there. Then we're just going to add a low protein milk into there. And then we're just going to let it simmer for a couple of minutes. And then we'll pour it into the bowl and we'll put, add a little squeeze of lime to finish it off. When this is finished, we're going to squeeze a nice little bit of lime over the top. Can you see that? There you go, just to add a nice little bit in there. So we've got some sweetness. We've got a nice little bit of sharpness in there and the chili will give it a nice little bit of heat. Four to five minutes, the soup's cooked. The smell's unbelievable. You can never have enough coriander in a soup. Just look at that lovely, nice Thai green soup using the low protein milk. Don't forget, you can always dip your garlic bread in the end. Delicious. So what we're going to make here is we're going to make a nice little stir fry. And whenever we make like a stir fry, I always find if you can get the, the vegetables into like julienne strips, it's always much nicer. Yeah. The other thing I quite like to do is if I get some um, Savoy cabbage, if you don't have any pak choy in the shops or anything like that, just get the Savoy cabbage, just roll it up quite tightly and then just cut it really thin. And it just adds that beautiful little bit of colour in there. So this is really quite a colourful little stir fry we're going to do. Now, on the pan over there, I've got my water on. Now my water's boiling away. I'm going to put a little bit of oil into there. As you can see, it's bubbling really fero ferociously. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of oil into there. And when we drop the pasta into there, it's not going to stick together. So here we are, we've got our tagatelli. So we can put the tagatelli in here. We've got some nice low profile tagatelli in here. So as you can see, our water's boiling here. We've got our pasta into there. We've got the oil into there. And once it goes in there, we can stir it in. We could use spaghetti into there. We could also use some rice into there as well. Okay, so we're going to cook that for about eight minutes and then we're going to run it under the cold water. Remember, the reason why we always run it under the cold water when it's to finish is to stop it breaking down. If you leave it in the warm water, it just carries on cooking and just falls to bits. We're just going to cut all our vegetables into nice thin julienne strips. Okay, you can even dice them if you wanted to. You can have them any way you want. It's just a nice little different effect in things as well. Nice and easy. Okay, when we're going to do garlic, yeah? Just take the back of your knife, press it down there like that, and then just peel the garlic, okay? Then we're just going to put a little salt, we'll chop it, and then we'll crush it with a little salt, a sprinkling of salt over the top, okay? And then you're just going to crush it with your knife, pull the chopping board over to the edge, and then you just crush it. Okay, so what we're looking for is a nice little paste here as well, okay? Some of the other vegetables we could use, we could use sweet potatoes, we can use leeks, we can use onions, we can use celery, we can use all sorts of vegetables. So when you get all these vegetables in your fridge and you, you're a little bit worried about, oh, I can't make anything, we can just make these and make all, all sorts of different things. Okay, so here's our pasta now. And we're just pushing it under there. And you can see how it hasn't stuck together. It's just absolutely perfect. So we're just gonna run it under the cold water. Yeah, just let it cool down. And there we go. If you've got any extra low protein pasta or rice, this is a really good little chef Neil steak tip. The best thing you can do is to take one of these Ziploc bags, okay, put a little bit of oil into there, okay, just a few little drops, push the lid across the top there like that, and then just rub the oil through it. Now, you can put this into the freezer, it'll keep up for three months in the freezer, but if you want to use it in the next couple of days, like three days time, you can put that into the, the fridge and then bring it out, Pull the little lid off there, put it into the microwave, heat it up for about 30 to, 30 to 40 seconds in the microwave, and then you'll have some beautiful, hot, low-profile pasta. 
So what we're going to do here is we've got a nice little wok on the go and we're going to get it really hot as well. You don't have a cold wok or anything like that. You can see how the smoke's just starting to come off the top of it. That's what we're looking for. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop our vegetables into there and then we're just going to stir them around there. Yeah, We just want to cook them off, get a little bit of colour into them as well. And then there you go. Can you see them? Yeah, a little bit of smoke. We'll just turn the heat slightly down here. There we go. And you can see. So there it goes. So we'll just let the vegetables keep moving them around there. See if you can get them just a little bit of colour onto them. You don't want to cook them too much. You don't want them too soft. Can you see the way the cabbage is starting to curl up on the side? There we go. That's absolutely perfect for what we're looking for. There you are. We're just giving them another couple of minutes into there. Got the garlic. Oh, it absolutely smells delicious. So there we are. There's our vegetables nicely cooked. Smells unbelievable. I can smell that chilli oil here. Then we're going to add our low protein tagatelli into there. We're just going to stir it around and then we're going to add the sauce into there as well. Oh god, the smell is unbelievable. It's fantastic. There we are. Just a few little things. You've got to keep it moving in the wok. You don't want it to stick. And then put your sauce into there. Okay. If you're going to use one of these sauces, you've always got to make sure you check the label. There you are. Oh, the smell of that is absolutely delicious. There you go. And then we just ease it out onto the plate. There we go. Look at that. Absolutely delicious. The smell is unbelievable. And it is really quick and easy to do. What we did here was we just took some really simple ingredients. We took some mushrooms, some onions, some peppers. We took some of the low protein pasta and some sauce put them in a nice frying pan, got the oil up to temperature, and we made a simple, easy stir fry. Winter's on its way, let's make some really nice fruit flans. We're gonna make some nice fruit flans from the Ready Steady Cookbook. First thing we're gonna do is we've got our low protein flour here, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is put our butter and margarine into there, and then we're just gonna rub it through gently. Okay, so what we're looking for is like a really sort of crumbly type texture. Okay, so you want to rub all the fat into there. Now, my tip for you here is to add one little gram of baking powder into the mixture. And what you'll end up with is a nice fluffy type of pastry, yeah? It won't be like hard at all, it'll be nice and light. Okay, so we just roll that into there. So, when you get it to this stage here, what we're going to do next is add our sugar into here and then we're going to add that little one gram of baking powder into there and just again just rub it in there now we're going to take 50 grams of this mixture out for the topping which we're going to mix in with a little bit of brown sugar and a little bit of mixed spice and we'll make the bottom with this and there we go next thing is we just put a few little drops of um, low protein milk into there there we go and then we're just going to push it around and we'll make a mix a nice ball into there here's our pastry see how it's gone together nice and firm when we pull it apart when we have that little bit of uh, baking powder into there it doesn't make it so um short as well and it'll be easier for us to roll now when we go to roll this pastry out, this is the way I always, always roll my pastry out. Never sticks, it's the best way. Just push it down into a little circle onto a piece of um, greaseproof paper. So there's our low protein pastry onto there like that. Then we just take our rolling pin and then we just gently press on the top. Don't push too hard because if you push too hard, you end up getting like the Himalayas through the whole thing. Yeah, so again, there we go. And as you can see, just keep turning. Half turns and we'll get a nice circle here. Now, I've lined the tin as well, so it'll make it easier for us to come out. Okay, and what we've got to do is make sure we get it to the same size as the tin, yeah? There we go. Yeah, there's no better way of rolling pastry than that. But then what we do is we get it onto our hand like that. Just bring that up into the center. Turn it over and then from the outside, don't pull the paste, paper off yet, just push it down with your fingers into every corner. Okay, and then just gently 
push it like that. Now, I'm going to leave this to rest for a couple of minutes, yeah? I don't want to pull it straight off because what's going to happen is the paste will stick to the, the sides and things, okay? So we'll just leave that to rest for a couple of seconds. So that's how you make your low protein pastry. We've let it rest a couple of minutes now. Remember, the bottom of the tin is lined with a piece of greaseproof paper as well. So we pull that off there like that and voila. Next thing we're going to do is add our filling into here, our blueberries and our raspberries into there. Just spread them out over the top there like that. Don't press them down too much. Okay. Next thing is we've got our mixture that we took off, that 50 grams of mixture. Then we're just going to add the brown sugar into here, stir it into there. We're going to put a little bit of mixed spice into there. And this is going to be the topping for it as well. And then push it all together and then just gently flake it over the top like that. And as you can see, it's going to cook and we'll end it with a lovely flan. There we are. Isn't that perfect? Now, what we're going to do, put it into the oven. So the oven's set at 175. We're going to cook it for 20 minutes and then we'll turn it out. Perfect. When it's cooked, we're going to put it on the table. We're going to let it stand. You know what the best thing is? We're going to make some really nice, hot, low protein custard to go over the top of it. Okay, there's 25 minutes. Our low protein tart is cooked. It looks absolutely delicious. We're just gonna take it out of the oven. There you are, look at that. Absolutely perfect. The pastry's nice and golden brown. We're gonna put it onto the cooling wire. We're gonna let it stand there for about 10 to 15 minutes. You don't wanna turn them straight out because if you turn them straight out, what happens is they just fall apart. So we're just gonna leave that to set, to cool down nicely and then we're going to cut a little bit of it off and then we're going to pour that gorgeous low protein custard over the top of it. So here we are. So we've got a tart in there. So the way we're going to turn it out is we're just going to turn it up and we should hear it plop, which is just done. There we are. Pull out a little bit of off the bottom. Put the other one on the top. It's the moment of truth absolutely perfect just look at that lovely low protein pastry not dry and hard nice and crumbly when we cut into it the blueberries and the and the raspberries absolutely delicious you know what we're going to have over that a nice bit of custard okay you know what we're going to make now we're going to make that lovely winter warming custard we're going to use that low protein milk we put a nice little couple knobs of butter in there to add a little bit of creaminess into there the milk's just come to the boil here it's simmering nicely and then we're going to add a custard powder into there just a few little drops into there keep it stirring and it'll start to thicken up oh look at that it's absolutely beautiful it's just thickening up absolutely perfect we add our little sugar into there there we go and then we stir it and there it is, look at that perfect custard. Look at the gloss on the top of it as well. It's absolutely fantastic. Next thing, we always need a nice little jug. Pour it in there. Look at that, absolutely fantastic. That's how you make lovely low protein custard over your nice little low protein flan. I could eat that myself. Here we are. We've finished the finals here. Look at all this fantastic food we've got. We've got this lovely, nice Thai green soup in with the low protein milk. We've used the low protein bread with the nice garlic butter on there, flashed it under the grill, and that could be our starter. And not forgetting. Here we go, the main course, we've used the nice low protein tagatelli in there in the stir fry. Remember we can use the rice or we could use the spaghetti in here. We just don't have to use the tagatelli. So if you have the rice or the spaghetti, we could use that instead. And not forgetting the piece de resistance, that lovely low protein pastry that we made with the mix and not forgetting the custard again used with a low protein milk. I'll tell you what, I'll be taking this home with me. All the recipes we've used tonight are in the low protein recipe book. I've really enjoyed cooking for you. So I hope you enjoy cooking them too. Thanks very much.